What is up lads and ladies, it's Edward here and welcome back to another video and today, because Team of the Season is just around the corner or already out or out tonight, depending on, whether this, on when this video goes out I thought I would actually bring you my BPL Team of the Season In goal, I am going with Hugo Lloris He has actually kept the most clean sheets out of all the goalkeepers this year in this season, I think around 15 or 16. Considering the fact that being a goalkeeper, you have to keep clean sheets, showing you're good, sort of means that he should be in the team of the season with the most clean sheets. Left back, I'm gonna go with Marcus Alonso from Chelsea. Of course, Chelsea have just won the league, so it would be quite obvious that Chelsea players are gonna make it into the team of the season, but Marcus Alonso has been highly Highly consistent, scoring goals, assisting goals, keeping clean sheets for Chelsea as well. Sort of that left wing back role. But a lot of people didn't actually rate him when Conte first brought him in. And the way he's excelled this season has been absolutely incredible. So, kudos to Conte. Right back, I am actually going to go with Kyle Walker, who, of course, like a lot of other Tottenham players who will probably be on this list, has had an outstanding season, keeping clean sheets, keeping the goals, keeping the assists coming, you know, giving them the best defensive record, along with his teammate, Jan Vertonghen. And I've got to include the guy in there. He's team of the season, community gold, most consistent. He has been a consistent brick wall for Tottenham in helping them to actually concede the least amount of goals in the league this season. And of course, the next centre-back in the team is actually going to be Michael Keane. Bet you weren't expecting that one. But Michael Keane has had an outstanding season at Burnley, like I'm saying with all the rest of these actually. He's been one of their standout players and has kept them in the positions they are, so without him they would have conceded a lot more goals. He's getting linked with all the top clubs, including Everton. That does of course complete the defence and the two centre mids I'm going with, I mean it is quite obvious who the first one is, N'Golo Kante. Guy is a complete rock. He's one of the main factors for Leicester winning the league, he's one of the main factors for Chelsea winning the league. You know, he's been nominated for the Premier League Player of the Year and he won the player of the year so surely that means he's got to get in the team of the season but the amount of interceptions the amount of passes even goals he this guy can do anything and of course the other sentiment is actually the other player of the year the young player of the year Deli Alley. he's been absolutely incredible for Spurs and actually is one of the main reasons why they're so high up in the league and the fact he only cost five million as well but he scored at least 15 goals so that's more than some of the top strikers at top clubs this season that just shows the consistency and the talent this guy's got. Considering the fact he's a midfielder as well. One on the right mid. And as much as it hurts me to say, I'm going with Sadio Mane. Guy has been absolutely incredible for Liverpool this season. And I need to stop saying that. But it, I think he's the highest goal scorer in the club. Uh, one of the highest in assists. And Liverpool actually recorded more losses while he was actually gone to the African Cup of Nations that he'd been at Liverpool. Which... It's weird because it's sort of like he's sort of like the glue that Liverpool need and once you take away the glue, everything just falls apart and it just shows how much they need him in the team. And it really does hurt me having to put him in the team because he scored against us. One was the match winner at Goodison and then the other was at Anfield, the opening goal. Left mid is quite an obvious pick. It is of course Chelsea's Eden Hazard, who did miss out on the player of the year, even though he thoroughly deserves it because the amount he's contributed everywhere, everything like that, he's just... He's won the awards and he's won Chelsea the title. He's one of their main factors. I think if Hazard was out, Chelsea probably wouldn't be in the position they are. And now, of course, we come to the two strikers. And they're quite obvious. It's the two leading goal scorers at this point. Harry Kane with 22 goals. Yeah, he's doing pretty well for Spurs at the minute. Considering the fact everyone was saying he's a one-season wonder. Been absolutely incredible for Spurs, you know, scoring hat-tricks. I think he had about three hat tricks in about six games, something like that. Something ridiculous. If he can, if he stays with Spurs, Spurs probably, probably going to be. I reckon they could actually win the title next season. And of course, the other striker is, of course, the two goals ahead of Harry Kane. It is Everton's Romelu Lukaku. Ah, uh, prob well, probably one of our big players, literally. But the guy has just contributed. He's base. If we didn't have Lukaku, we wouldn't be in the position we are because he has scored at least 50% of our goals. Guy is just a beast, he's strong, he's quick, he's brilliant, just... 
I really don't. I really hope we don't lose them this summer. That starting 11 is my team of the season right there. So if you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like, leave a comment down below. Do you agree with my team of the season? Do you feel I missed people out? Do you feel I misplaced people and put them in when they shouldn't have? So subscribe to the channel for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.